you guys, Haley here, and today um, I wanted to do a bit of an informational video um, on the different type of stuff you can collect if you're an anime fan. Obviously, I like to collect a lot of stuff, um, so I thought it'd be a fun video to go through the main categories of things that you can collect um, and do I guess like a bit of a guide about them, um, what you can do with them, how you can display them, buying tips, and you also might discover something that you didn't realize that you want to waste your money on collecting. <laughs> I'm not even gonna talk about figures, like obviously you can collect anime figures, that's kind of the entire gist of this channel, so watch any of my other videos if you want to know about figure collecting. This video is for like everything else. Now first of these you've probably seen a lot on my background boards that I make but it is can badges. So I think most people's gripes with the can badges is they're kind of useless. Um, and yeah, I would mostly agree, but I do really like displaying them on canvas boards um, as well as putting them on Eater bags. Um, it's just like an interesting way to display a tiny piece of art. <laughs> the great news with cam badges is that there is an insane selection that you can get, and most of these are like dirt cheap secondhand from Mandarake. I think that most of these are usually from Ichiban Kujis as lower tier prizes, or they come out as a set for gacha machines. I love chucking these onto an existing Mandarake order because they're so tiny and cheap they're not going to add to the shipping. Um, and I like buying can badges for shows that I like, but I don't like enough to buy a scale figure of. You can buy can badges new from Amiyami, uh, but this usually involves buying the entire set of badges, so a set of 8 or 12 or whatever. This is way overkill, but you can actually also buy covers for your can badges to protect them, and like some of them are glittery and holographic. Man, Japan takes their collecting very seriously. Next up are enamel pins, which are very similar to badges in how you display them. Um, I find a lot of super cool enamel pins from independent artists on Kickstarter, Instagram, Twitter, etc. There are some official enamel pins, but I don't really see this often. Like I have this one Studio Ghibli one um, and a few from a Fate exhibition. But apart from that, I generally collect independent artist ones. They just get a lot more creative with the art style and the designs. Enamel pins do tend to be pretty pricey. They can be anywhere from like five to $15, depending on the detail. And shipping can be expensive as well, depending on where you're buying them from. I love displaying them on canvas boards, on eater bags, putting them on outfits, um, and putting them on like pin pennants and then hanging those up. In the same vein, we have acrylic charms, so these can be kind of harder plastic ones or soft plastic ones as well. There's a wide range of designs both for official straps and also independent artist design straps. Uh, again, I love putting these on boards, eater bags. I don't actually ever trust them using them as a keychain, I'd be devastated if they ever just broke and fell on the ground. My personal favourite is the line of cos per pinch straps where the characters look like they're being plucked out of the air by the strap. I think the art style of these are like super cute just like how Nendroids are like a chibi version of the characters like this is just like a pinched version of all of the characters. And since we've already established that Japan takes collecting anime merch pretty seriously, there's also this company that sells these cute frames for your acrylic charms, so you can put them in front of different backgrounds and settings, um, and it's like additional protection. <laughs> I do think these are just super cute to put down as displays though. So continuing on with the plastic theme, the next step we have are acrylic stands. I guess a lot of the time this is for characters or designs that might not justify a full scale figure of, but you can find some great designs, particularly within doujin circles, um, and you can get some really small ones, really big ones, 
and these are definitely a lot cheaper than a figure. <laughs> I think these are great for placing on the edge of a bookcase where you wouldn't have enough room to put a scale figure down, but these would be perfect. So next up we have shikishi boards. Shikishi literally translates to square fancy cardboard um, and these can be used for mainly autographs or poetry, um, but they can of course also be used to sell anime merch. You can normally pick these up secondhand fairly cheaply, and because they're so flat and light, they don't add much to shipping. A lot of my favorite shikishi boards are actually collaborations between animes and brands. So this one's FGO and Lawson, and it's just got Jolter and Salta eating Lawson fried chicken and just vibing out. I love it. <laughs> You can also buy the shikishi boards new from sites like Amiyami, but this usually means you have to buy the entire set. They really vary in size and design as well. Uh, you can get your standard ones, but also big ones. And I kind of collect these like more durable art prints. As always, Japan has you covered on the collection aspect and you can buy shikishi display folders or shikishi sleeves to keep all of your favorite shikishi boards safe and sound. I mainly treat these like postcards or prints, so I like to pin them up on boards and etc. Next up, we're talking about clear files. Now I know on the Trash Tapes podcast, they kind of went on about these being useless, but personally, I love them. To me, they're like an A4 plastic print or a poster, but they're more durable. And the added bonus is if you wanted to, you could put documents in them. There are a ton of different clear file designs out there, and you can usually find them pretty dirt cheap on Mandarake secondhand. When I went to Japan, I remember at a lot of stores, they would just have bins of clear files and they'd be like a hundred yen each. And you can also find some really nice clear files new on AmiAmi as well. There's a lot of limited event clear files, such as collaborations between brands and animes, or if an anime ever has a limited time event or a cafe, they'll produce a clear file. I do find the idea really funny of some like Japanese businessmen rocking up to a business meeting like yes I've got the business documents and then they like pull them out of some love life clear file or something. This is an item in my next video but I wanted to mention that they've transcended the idea of a clear file actually holding documents because they've just made clear files that open outwards to have like full, a full character spread <laughs> it's not even a clear file anymore but to me it's just like a really cool apple print now sick what will they think of next next up is apparel and apparel can be pretty hit or miss for me on sites like army army because you'll have some really cool designs like this euro camp one um, but then you will have some not so cool designs like the Saber one. Sorry, Saber. Don't get me wrong, some of them can definitely look good, but a lot of them look tacky in my opinion. One thing to look out for when buying Japanese anime apparel is to check your sizing because it might be different. Big brands as well might do collaborations with anime, so Uniqlo at the moment have like a Jujutsu Kaisen line, which I really hope comes to the Australia Uniqlo's. Um, and recently they had a bunch of Evangelion t-shirts and I basically have every single one of the <laughs> Evangelion t-shirts. Because I sometimes struggle with the t-shirt sizing, I tend to just buy uh, anime tote bags instead of t-shirts. Um, you can also find some really cool tote bag designs and you don't have to worry about them fitting. There's also a number of really good independent stores with original designs. Um, some of the ones I bought from are Kami Fox Apparel, Bakaretsu, and BB Summer. They can also be on the expensive side, but from my experience, most of the shirts I buy have been amazing quality so far. Next thing we're talking about is wall scrolls. So apart from figures, wall scrolls are another very popular thing uh, to collect. They're like posters that aren't going to rip. There are a lot of really cool designs, both official wall scrolls and wall scrolls from um, independent artists or doujin artists. However, compared to like posters, wall scrolls can be pretty expensive. A, because the quality is good and also they're expensive to ship. 
because wall scrolls are so long it's gonna put your package into the next size bracket which isn't the end of the world but in today's day and age of having to use DHL to ship our packages that's not good. And also sites like Melon Books and Toro Noana have really good selection from doujin artists such as Yomu, Kosaki, and Pochi. I have picked up a few wall scrolls from Melon Books but they're currently on a boat to my country so when they get here expect a wall scroll haul. And of course you can find secondhand wall scrolls on Mandaraki as well though it does take quite a bit of time for these to trickle through the aftermarket and more usual than not, their prices will go up. So posters are of course another thing. There's not too much else to add other than they're kind of flimsy or wall scrolls. They might rip more easily. You can get a lot of official Japanese posters. I think there's a lot of eBay sellers that do that and you can get them from Mandarake. Um, I think one of Anambade's first couple of hauls had a lot of these which are really cool. After watching her video I did go back and pick up this fabulous Nisekoi poster from Mandarake. It's so beautiful. On the topic of like paper and poster there's a lot of prints, postcards, stickers and things like that that you can get from anime, sometimes from collaborations or from cafes or anniversary events. Stuff like that can be pretty hard to buy new but occasionally will pop up on Mandarake. So you have things like prints or little postcards, random cards, collecting coasters from like limited time cafes is a big thing. I think a better thing in this category as well is just kind of independent art. So we're talking the Amiami postcards that they commission artists to do or just art that you buy from artists you like online. You can buy a lot of amazing prints from places like Etsy or directly on the artist's store. Honestly, I'm blown away by the quality of like the fan art out there. Obviously, I love collecting bits of paper and art and I love placing it on a board to be able to look at and admire. Next up, CDs. Now, if there's an anime you like, chances are you can buy the entire anime soundtrack or just the OP and EDs. This might not be the most popular thing, but I do like collecting some of these since the packaging and the art on this can be really nice. And most often they come with more collectible content inside the CD, such as little booklets or little cards. You can buy CDs from Amiyami and they'll also come up secondhand on Mandarake, usually for pretty cheap. If you've seen any of my other videos, then you probably know I love collecting art books. Um, so art books can be around a particular theme, like bunny girls. It could be based around a particular anime, maybe art of the source material, or just an art book for a compilation of different art from different artists. I think art books can be pretty expensive to buy both secondhand and new and unfortunately they are quite heavy and so expensive to ship. Having said that, I am never disappointed when I get an art book. Um, I love flipping through and seeing beautiful art. I don't know, it's just something I really enjoy collecting. You can buy a lot of art books secondhand from Mandarake, and you can usually find these new on Amiyami, although the listings can be a little tricky to find. Next up, plushies. There are a ton of anime plushies of all different shapes, sizes, and price range. I'm not myself a huge plushie collector, but obviously I've been swayed to pick up a plushie every now and then. And of course, plushies can be pretty expensive to ship depending on what size plushie you're looking at buying. One of the more popular subtypes of plushie is the Nesoberry. Nesoberry means lying sprawled on your side or your stomach, so they tend to be lying down on their stomachs. I'm a bit of a sucker for Nesso Berries. I think they are so cute, but the problem is they take up so much space with their big ass heads, so I don't let myself buy too many. But I do think it looks really cute when you have multiple lying together and they're all like Nesso Berrying as a crew. <laughs> 
Next up, we have doujins. Now, this is definitely something that's a lot more popular in Japan than it is in the West. Now, I know the first thing that might come to mind are like six cheeky numbers. Um, and yes, there are a lot of adult doujins out there. Actually, a lot is an understatement. There are so many that it's ridiculous. <laughs> But there's actually a ton of all ages or safe for work doujin art books out there. I basically consider it like the Japanese equivalent of like Artist Alley at a convention, except it's at Comic Cat. But instead of buying a single print from an artist, you're buying like a book or a collection of their art, kind of like a zine. I find that a lot of the art is on par with the official works, and for particular series like Fate, Azure Lane, Hololive, both the quality and the sheer volume of art out there is ridiculous. A lot of the doujins are printed on really high quality paper with fabulous colouring and it honestly just feels like buying a, an art book. You can also find a lot of doujins that are original kind of manga or comics but I can't read Japanese so I tend to stay clear of those. I usually buy them secondhand from Mandarake or new from Melon Books. So lastly, I just have a few other miscellaneous knickknacks, so I'm just going to rapid fire through these. There's a few different papercraft collectibles coming out. I've seen Jujutsu Kaisen, Evangelion, uh, Miku ones. They can be pretty fun to make and at the end of it you have a bit of a collectible as well. In the same vein you have Nano Blocks, which is kind of like lego for adults not even but they have a few anime clubs the next little thing is model cars so sometimes tomica will have uh, anime tie-ins i just saw like an entire line of demon slayer tomicas and of course you can go for your type moon or good smart racing uh, replica model cars as well but those get pretty pricey and finally i've got jigsaw puzzles too i've been noticing a trend where the jigsaw puzzle art is looking better and better so you get the bonus of having to do a jigsaw um, at the end of it you can put this clear coat all over it and put it up like a, like a framed print so that's everything i hope you guys found at least like one new type of merch you might want to throw your money at um, I'm hoping I didn't forget anything too obvious I mean I didn't talk about figures and I didn't talk about manga but if I forget, like, I feel like, am I forgetting something? <laughs> but let me know what your favorite type of merch to collect is. I'd love to know what you guys are into. I obviously mainly like collecting anime figures, but I'm also really into collecting paper-based stuff, even though it's kind of useless. I just like looking at it. Anyway, yes, that is all I had for you guys. Uh, I hope everyone has an amazing week and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.